You're listening to Fat Cat Radio, a family of hosts playing the best local music, raising the bar one note at a time. And welcome, welcome to the Big Rich and Little Lisa Show. Happy Easter to everyone. Next, in a live show, we will talk a woman marrying a spirit, urine, hmm, Guinness Book of World Record wings. Ouch, I'm kind of scared. What's going on, everyone? Happy Easter evening this Sunday. I am in the studios with my homie. What's up, little Lise? Hey, good evening, Rich. How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing good. It's uh, it's Easter, but ain't no stopping us. Ain't no, no stopping, stopping us, baby. And ain't no stopping us. <laughs> we're here, Easter evening, and uh, we're going to bring you guys some funny, some interesting, and uh, of course, we'll have our independent artist of the week. We got Where's the Beef? Man, but I want to open up with something tonight. <clears throat> I know, and this is going to be like the eighth week in a row where the word corona comes up, but I'm going to go a little off the coronavirus tonight because I've been looking up patents the last week in between interviews and editing, and one particular patent really jumped out at me, and this one uh it's gonna blow your mind now where it takes us is this is u.s patent 6506148b2 the date of this patent is january 14th 2003 okay now what this was uh made to be is a nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors from the basic uh, computer monitor that you have sitting at home um, <clears throat> the psychological effects have been observed in human subjects in response to stimulation of the skin with weak electromagnetic fields that are pulsed with certain frequencies near half a hertz or 2.4 hertz, such as to excite a sensory, you know, the resonance in your body. So um, what this guy is doing is he's saying that we can play videos in the background of videos or when people go to search let's say google for like for example they can have images in the background playing at a frequency that we can't see them but they're we are physically picking up everything that it's saying now look this is not old technology in the sense that this type of propaganda was going on when tv the tv box first came out when they would say the pledge of allegiance at the end of the night and then it would right before it would go uh, to all fizzles like the, you remember the old like when no more shows were on TV I don't know if you're old enough to remember Lisa but it would go to all like scrambled like shh. Mm -hmm. well right before that they would show the flag an image of the flag waving in the air different monuments across the country and the Pledge of Allegiance was played but during that a guy slowed it down the flicker rate it was showing that words were being drug across the screen, like obey, your government is your master, work, conform. These were actually being put across, shuttered across to us back then in the 50s. So if you think they could do it then, imagine what they're doing with technology now. And so if anyone has a chance, you can look this uh, patent up, uh, you know, the. Uh, the applied number is 09872528. And uh, the actual patent number uh, and the, da the date of the patent, I'm gonna give you that, January 14th, 2003, one more time. And you can look this up and read it. It's like seven or eight pages. And it'll just blow your mind uh, about how they can control you and manipulate you just right here while you sit in front of your computer. 
uh, and that's U.S. Patent 6506148B2. So basically 6506148B2. Check that out, man, if you're interested in finding out if you're, they're frying your brain. Um, I've had a couple of people already chime in. Uh, Marianne says she cannot hear the show. I'm having other people saying that they're able to hear it fine. How about you? I have a few people saying that they're hearing us just fine. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know. We did get a little bit of a late start uh, this evening, but hey, we're here, man. It's Easter. Let's have some fun. Lise, um, didn't you have something? Uh, I know we're going to be splitting up stories tonight, folks. Uh, because we just both, we just want to have fun. There were so many interesting and weird things. Um, man, you were telling me, what was that one about that? It might've been a personal story. Cause I know that we, we had just text off and on a little bit today. And, uh, we, we actually both didn't even hit the studio together until the last minute to record that little teaser and intro. Um, but, uh, oh, you were talking about. I think the dude's name might have been Gary. Greg. I don't know. I'm not good with because we only talked briefly, but it was you had me rolling, girl. And I, yeah. Look, you guys, you know we're tawdry on this show, and uh, you know some people are like, oh God, they're so dirty. But you know we just I don't know we find humor and stupid stuff, I guess. And sometimes we share it and you laugh. Sometimes you hear it and you go, those are the two stupidest people that I've ever listened to in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> but what um it was great or yeah it was yeah, great okay. and, and it was a story i was telling you so let me ask you a question before i tell you what i did what did you do for easter okay now i'm gonna be honest um i'm working seven days a week now so i work this, this will be the first easter now i did cook i cooked for uh my son a little bit you you saw uh you know when you swung by earlier i mean i was trying to just throw together something, you know, but I, uh, got him cook. I cooked him a turkey breast, some gravy, uh, some old gratin potatoes, uh, that we had mustard up from scratch. And I'm not even going to lie. We got stove top stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave him a can of green beans, threw him some bre butter bread and said, uh, yeah, no, happy Easter guys. I've got to get the studio and record. But uh, we, you know, just work, man. Today work, it's it's sucking right now. I'm seven days a week in the warehouse and in these stores delivering bread, and then I'm spending every other minute editing. I mean, I'm about to drop about six shows just all in the next three or four days. Just you're gonna get them, uh, and it's everything from uh, the finale with um, the JFK show, uh, Gwen Clapper show, Slides show, uh, and I want to give a shout out right now too. Um, to Brian James Gage. He's an author. I also interviewed him and I just got your book in the mail. I started reading it. I can't put it down, man. Every time that I have a spare second, I've been reading this thing. It's called the Nosferatu effect. And it's part, this is going to be one of a book of three. I can see this thing being a movie. It is just a home run. Um, and uh, I, that interview will be going out too. So if you're interested, uh, it, it's about time for some new to breathe. It's funny I say this: breathe some new blood into the vampire movies. <laughs> we need some new ones. Uh, but with that said, everything's going forward. I, we, we're still even working on the Colossal Five. That's still going to come out. Um, and you know, we're working on the the prisons, uh, prisons for profit. I'm going to talk to that guy again tonight. Actually, after the show. Uh, Marcus Larson, I believe. I'm going to be speaking with him again uh, to let him know the push on that. And then, uh, you know, you're working on your um, own personal one. What was that again? Uh, the, the, uh, it's a special about child abuse. Yeah, I don't want to sound like I want you to tell, talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, all of people are, she's, she's an open book, but she doesn't hide it. She was a victim of abuse and a part of the system as a child. So she lived this firsthand, and I say she is, that's little Lise, and uh, it's a passion of hers. Not only that, kudos again, feeding the homeless as you could, um, and I'm giving you that shout out because you're a relentless girl. You are. You're out, you don't even need to be out there, and you're out there, so kudos again, um, and if you need more bread, you just let us know because we got plenty. Bread of plenty. I got bread for everyone now. And you know what's funny? Before I let you tell that story, I don't know. We're just rambling. Like, we're going to have fun tonight. It's Easter. If we go two hours, we're going two hours. 
while I was in Walmart working today, it was funny as crap. Both of the big boy managers were there and they're just moving pallets of toilet paper all around the back. And then you go out on the floor everywhere, every turn, there's a like a display of toilet paper. Up front, they've got a big pallet of toilet paper. There's a toilet paper on the end cap. There's toilet paper back by the meat. There's toilet paper on the veggie. I mean, it's just a bonanza of toilet paper now. All of a sudden, we got toilet paper again and bread. So. Folks, if you need bread or toilet paper, if you need to wipe your butt or make a peanut butter and jelly, get down to your local Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, Lisa, I'm done rambling. What did you do for Easter? Well, I know a lot of you guys out there only know me from the radio show. You don't know me personally. And the people that do know me personally knows that the literally Lisa you get on the radio, that's funny. That's how I am all the time. I'm all about making people laugh and everything. <clears throat> so my, you are. my brother Greg and his wife Marie – and their two children come down to my house for Easter. Oh. They, I mean, it, they don't live very far. I see. Now, and, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention to it because I didn't know you were talking about your brother at first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is so, even better now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all outside this morning drinking coffee. Just, you know, kind of kick it back before I just start pouring down rain. But mm. anyway, uh, my sister-in-law, Marie, she said that she, she needed to go to the bathroom, number two. The coffee was going right there. She's mm. diabetic, so... It does something to her when she drinks coffee. Mm -hmm. Well, her daughter, Alexis, was in the shower just getting out. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, like, the next thing I know, I could hear Alexis yelling, Elisa, help me, help me. And I'm cracking up laughing. And then it dawned on me that I had these, like, fart bombs. <laughs> and they stink so bad. I tell my brother Greg, I was like, hey, listen, go in there and just slightly open the bathroom door and squeeze this until you hear a slight pop and then just throw it in there and shut the door. So he did. He comes back outside and all of a sudden we start hearing both of them screaming in there and then it was like, <laughs> boom, it sounded like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and all you could hear was them, they were in there gagging. Like my sister-in-law, she's on the toilet trying to wipe. <laughs> and she's, uh, uh, and I mean, it was just... It was so funny. My ribs were hurt. I was laughing um, so hard. Like, you realize so April hard. Fool's was two weeks back. I know, but this is just me every day. <laughs> like, <laughs> everybody else is all about, like, all lovey dovey Easter stuff. But I'm that, like, I'm just funny all the time. I want to make people laugh. Like, you do. The year before, a couple of years ago, uh, my brother Greg was at my house. My mom and dad, everybody was there mm -hmm. before they had passed away. And <laughs> my, uh, but the boys in the family decided to play football, mm -hmm. mud football, because it was raining, of course, Easter. They rain, it rains every year. And my brother, my two brothers were on the same team. And I have a brother that's got intellectual mm -hmm. problems. He tackles on, his own quarterback. Did everybody leave the studio? I thought we were in the studio alone. I'm, I'm hearing back from people like shout in the background. Hopefully that's not coming across on the radio, folks. Uh, we thought that we were back here alone this evening. But it seems there's some loud people that don't realize that there's a couple of other folks back in the back of the studio going live. Unreal. All right, sorry, but go ahead, hon. Anyway, uh, a couple of years ago, they were playing mud football because it rains, you know, every Sunday. Easter Sunday, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my intellectual disabled brother was on Greg's team, but Greg was the quarterback, <laughs> and I don't know why, but the quarterback had won. He decided he was going to run. My brother, my other brother, tackles his own quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny, though. But no, look, Lisa, you know I love your family, and I met a lot, all of them, <laughs> most of them, and especially your aunt. Um, but you know, as you were describing that right there, it reminded me of uh, <laughs> something about Barry, where uh, he's like, everybody see my blue ball? <laughs> Get some in the ball sack. Uh, uh, speaking of that, Mar Marie's texting him right now. She says, I'm going to kill your ass. I totally <laughs> thought it was going to be something different that you're going to talk about tonight. <laughs> She's so bad. And then we have uh, a fan, Donica. I hope I pronounced her right. She says, happy Easter to both of you. And she says that she's also a survivor of abuse and that she thinks that, well, she says you are amazing, but I'm sure she's talking about both of us. Wow, yeah. Like I won't take all that credit though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was too funny. That's it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, a lot more than, uh, you know, before that was something that a lot of people would hold in and felt ashamed and, and would hide. But, um, you know, no, every, everyone has a story. I mean, we've all, been subjected to some type of abuse in our life now whether it be physical verbal uh you emotional know, emotional yeah sexual. i mean 
Um, yeah, and social bullying is the it's 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 at it's, at its heights now. And um, we and that's one thing I love about Slide, uh, the guy that's the independent musician trying to do it is um, he's a voice and a face and an advocate for that. So if he's listening tonight, uh, I know he likes to listen. Uh, there's a shout out to you, Slide, as well, and a shout out to. Uh, our big boss in the sky there, Twism, the man with the eye checking down on us, making sure yeah. uh, that we're keeping the people entertained. Do I not entertain you? If you guys have not done it, if you go onto my profile on Facebook, you will see where there is a, I don't know what you call it, like a voting thing for Twism, where he's been entered in to win six different contests, I think is what they called it. Anyway, find that post, go in. And, and vote for Twism, all six it's categories. It's the international, um, <clears throat> like, independent uh, awards. And he has been nominated in six uh, separate deals. And it's on, you can go to our Facebook fan page, you can go to our group page, uh, as well as you can go to Twism's, uh, if you just do a, a Facebook search for at Twism or at uh, TWP Nation. Um, and, yeah, let's get this man up there, dude. I mean, he's he's got some good stuff coming, and uh, it only gets better and better. You know, he just released a full album, uh, Twism 2020, as well as he did that three-song EP with uh, Furious, who in Furious is another guy. I interviewed him as well. He's out of uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Great guy, and I'll be getting that interview up as well. Okay, so um, I don't ahead. mean to interrupt you. But you have yeah. another fan that's chiming in, and I won't say her name because I don't want to embarrass her. But she says, Lisa, not a lot of people know this, but I did – did you know that I've tried to commit suicide 12 times because I've been bullied? This is what I'm going to say to you. And I know you're listening. I'm not going to say your name. I learned a long time ago. I had two choices in life from what I've lived through. One, I could be a victim, be an addict to drugs, alcohol, breaking laws, going to prison, whatever I chose to do and say, well, it's because of what I went through. Or I could be a survivor and I can tell my story and I can talk to young girls or boys or women, men, whoever that have or are going through what I did and try to help them pull through. And so what I'm going to tell you, taking your life because somebody else is ignorant is not what to do. You look at them and you just tell them, you know what, you can say whatever you want to about me, but you don't know what I've been through. You don't wear, you've never worn my shoes. You don't know. And you hold your head up high. Don't let somebody make you feel so worthless that you don't have the right to live. You understand me? I know you're out there listening and I'm waiting to hear a response. Don't let ignorance make you feel worthless because it's not true. Absolutely. That's another thing we're dealing with now too. Now, people don't understand that, that um, with everything that's going on with the big C, the Corona, uh, a lot of people that are locked down, they're uh, starting to become a little suicidal. So, Always remember, there's somebody out there. You only get one chance, one life to live, one soul. Here we are. Let's do it. Let's make the best of it. Um, we all matter. You all matter. If this reaches your ear tonight and that thought even comes across to it and you have my email or my instant message, my phone number or my text, Lisa's, or anyone that's involved with us, you reach out to us because we're here for you and we'll listen and we'll get you in the direction you need to be going. So you remember that. Anyone, once you're a fan, you are family. And even if you're not a fan, you're still someone that deserves respect, love, and humility. So, um, right. yeah, I'm with you on that. Hey, man, it's Easter. We're feeling the love tonight. Hey, I have, I have something for Easter for all the people out there listening. Okay. For everybody out there listening. It's contest time from Little Lisa and Big Rich. Okay, so this is the contest. I have in my hand right now a $15 Wendy's gift card for the first fan or listener or family member, whatever you always want to call yourselves, that listened to my show and Big Rich's show last week that can give me one topic that we spoke about. First fan to get in contact with either myself or Rich wins this card. And there's a catch. You have to be willing to be a guest on the show. Hey, you're going to come on live. And Last we'll, week we had Mr. 1500 on live. She man, that was all. You know what? You know what really impressed me about that is that we didn't record and he was as humble as pie. And he was like, man, it's okay. I don't mind sitting here and letting you two re record and I'll be a part of it too. And not only that, he went and fed the homeless with you. Come mm, on, man. Yeah. That just shows you where that guy's heart's at. I told you, he's, 
He's a good dude. He's man. a great guy. He, it was really fun hanging out with him and yeah. spending the day with him. And, and he's him. already got Smith Myers. He already had he had fans texting him saying, "Hey, who's Mister Fifteen Hundred? I love that new sexy voice." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was joking with him all day long. I was like, "Hey, not only are you a celeb for being number fifteen hundred, but now you're a radio show celeb too." Hey. He was walking around and he was like. You know, like brushing his shoulder a little bit. Oh, yeah. you know, being funny. I was like, dude, you're taking my women. I can't have you back on. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> um, yeah, so, man, let me see. I want to see that card. I thought, man, I thought, let me see that. I'll give it a Taco Bell. Ooh, we do have that, Wendy. Man, so, I'm going to eat it, but we're going to see. We'll see. We'll, let, uh, we'll, we'll give people a few minutes here. Uh, the first fan right now to tell us one topic or story from last week to either me or Lisa, they win this $15 Wendy's gift I card. I just had to make sure I bid. Oh, uh, what? I just had to make sure I bid. I'm going to show you because I don't want you to think it's bid at the very bottom. Oh, shut your mouth. I didn't want it. Nobody to think that it was planned. Hey. My daughter, Angelina Ryan, 10 years old, been a fan since day one, just chimed in. You talked about Tiger King. Twins named COVID and Corona. Actually, forgot I talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. And dating apps. We did. So. Hey, you know what? We gave ample time. Yes, we did. She's the only one that still has chimed in. So, Miss Angelina, you are the winner of a Wendy's gift card. Hey. I'll bring it up when I come home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I'm happy somebody's going to get that one. We, she says to tell Big Rich not to forget her professional letter from you because when you become a great big celebrity, she wants to have your St. Hawks and autograph. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Um, she's she's so smart. We're going to get her sent to school. I'm going to let her handle all the money, you know. That's right. Well, I don't know, because she has uh, expensive taste. She does. Uh, speaking she, of taste. She, you know, you know her, let me tell you, I got to tell you, because I'll forget. You know me. Her taste is so expensive. <laughs> It's like that old story about the neighbor who comes over and says, I'm about to make rock soup. Do you have any water that I could put in my pot? And they start and they get the water. And he comes over and says, I'm still making that rock soup. You wouldn't by chance have an onion from your garden that I could use. And then this <laughs> goes continues potatoes. And before you know it, he just made the soup, but off of the other guy, all his products. That's what she'll do. She'll, she'll send you a link and say, hey, I'm really interested. This is the board that I want, speaking of skateboards. Um, and it's only $69, you know, dollars, right? And then that's not for the cost of the wheels, the trucks. <laughs> <laughs> she's funny. I did it. She, she's all excited, happy. But, so, so, yeah, it's coming. This is her. That's her taste. So what turned out to be, man, that's a pretty good price for, uh, uh, you know, 64 bucks for a name brand skateboard, <laughs> then the trucks, then the tires, then this and that, and the sticker, and then the board paste and the sandpaper stuff that's on it. Next thing I know, it's like a $500 skateboard. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about how she's expensive. I was, I got a hundred dollar gift card for Christmas from Jason, Mr. Fouché. And, uh, I was showing my sister-in-law today all the Victoria lotions and body, you know, sprays I had and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And my daughter, you know, she has to follow me around everywhere I go. And she sees my Paris Hilton, which I had let my sister-in-law, you know, smell it. And she was like, oh, I love Paris Hilton. And my, my daughter's like, oh, well, I'll use that one because it cost $80. <laughs> she didn't want to use the Victoria's Secret stuff that was like 15 She would only use the $80 stuff. And I'm like, get out of my bathroom, lady. <laughs> I don't even know That's where she gives that taste her. from. That's like, funny. I'm poor. I can't um, afford that. Man, I got a weird story for you. Okay. Let me hear it. Um, and I'll bring this one up. It's out of Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. And while I'm going to bring this up, I'm going to tell this story. And the reason I'm going to correlate the Jacksonville, Florida story in this is that our independent artist this week comes from Florida. So it's a younger dude. Um, and he he's doing it, man. He's trying to do his thing. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about him in a second. But anyways, um, a Jacksonville uh, gas station owner became sick and tired of locals using his microwave to warm their urine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's disgusting. 
The owner of this BP gas station and convenience store <clears throat> claimed that random people keep walking in every day to warm the containers of their urine in his microwave. Those coming into the station used a microwave were allegedly not even customers and instead were supposed to be en route to a nearby drug testing facility. <laughs> so <crap. laughs> Mr. Patel uh is screaming out they walk in off the street like it's nothing they take my microwave they put the urine containers in it and then they just leave they won't even purchase anything he uh described one such incident in which the culprit was so desperate to warm her urine up that she started cussing out mr patel because he didn't want to let her use it and she's like well where's the sign that says i can't use this for the purpose of warming urine well, I don't know. Some people put their lunch burritos and sandwiches in there. <laughs> Hello. And shame on Patel for even letting them warm it up. Anyways. Yeah, dummy. So anyways, he created a warning sign. Uh, and the sign read, this is only for food. Don't microwave your urine. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, this poster's kind of gone viral. It's all over the internet. and. Um, that's crazy. So, yeah, people would uh, just come in and, you know, warm up the pee, and he was, Mr. Patel was getting mad. They're not buying no beer, no cigarettes. <laughs> They're not even buying a sandwich to warm up. And then they want to know why they put, uh, do not put this plastic over your face. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to have a sign for everything. I'm going to say, you know who said it best? Was Don King. Only in America. <laughs> You're going to find people that are allowed to warm their urine in a gas station microwave. Uh, we have a fan chiming in, uh, Summer. Yeah. And Hi, she Summer. says, gross. Some people actually drink their pee. There's a show on Lifetime that shows them drinking it. Strange Addiction, she says it's called. That's, That's horrible. That's so gross. Um, I did, uh, Marcus Larson was listening. Um, yeah, I'm gonna talk. That's the one I was gonna tell you. I was talking to the show. Uh, good stuff. Twism said he just he just hit me up. He says, "Man, guys, I can't make it tonight, but I will catch the replay." Awesome. 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 You have a happy Easter, Twism. Yeah, dude, loving that family, man. Uh, ooh, man, I'd hate to see his bill sometimes during the holidays with five kids. Yeah, and they're all over there. I mean, that's a good dude, man. That dude works his butt off. He's a good father. I'm still waiting for my CD in the mail if you're listening. Wait, well, you just need to go to Apple <laughs> iTunes and download that. I got the fam uh, Friends and Family Pack. You are a friend. I'm family to Twism. What are you talking about? Mm. Come on. Oh, baby, you. Summer says hello to you, too, Big Rich. Hey, Sums. Yeah, I'm giving shots out tonight. You know how it goes. <laughs> so with that said, uh, may you want to go ahead and drop, me to drop that Independent Artist of the Week? Well, I actually have a Florida story to tell you, too. Oh, okay. Real let's quick. tie another floor. Man, look, let's make this the Florida thing. <laughs> it's about a guy named Don Swartz. He's dressed as Fred Flintstone mm. and got pulled over for reportedly exceeding the speed limit in his handcrafted Footmobile. I don't know how you go over the speed limit in a footmobile, but he gets a ticket. Now, is he really pedaling? It says that it was made to look like the famous vehicle from the Flintstones. And according to a now viral Facebook post from the local sheriff's office, he was stopped for speeding. <laughs> so I'm hoping that that man cannot move his legs that fast. Oh, man. Yabba dabba doo. Miss Angelina says to tell Big Rich Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Angelina. Angelina, Bina, Bobina. <laughs> I remember, real quick, before you play the artist, I remember going to Silver Dollar City when I was like 12 with my parents and my grandparents. Me and my sister rode with my grandparents while my brothers rode with my parents. Mm -hmm. And we literally got pulled over. And I was all scared. Yeah, I was just a little kid. And they gave my grandparents a ticket for driving too slow. Oh, they'll do that. They will yeah. do this. Some some guys, some cops are so bored they will give. You, now it can be dangerous, but it's not as. I mean, I don't think any. I don't think anybody drives slow. Uh, Summer so. says he was yabba dabba doing in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, so here we are, folks. Uh, we're at that point. I'm going to give uh, the independent artist of the week to you guys. And before we get into it, his name is Audio Mage. And he calls himself the emo gangster. So kind of like, you know, that whole emo image, you know, the kid that's kind of, 
cuts himself or suicidal or you know emotional so, yeah emotional the emo gangster and uh audio mage he has some cool artwork and this is one of his older songs but why i chose it is he has a lot of good music uh and i think this guy will go somewhere eventually um but this one talks about fighting addiction um and man he he, he hits home if you listen to this guy so here we go Independent, 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 Lately, life been getting crazy wild. Addiction keeps trying to take me down. A lot of folks believed in me, I'ma make them proud. This for my friends in the struggle, never made it out. Lately, life been getting crazy wild. Addiction keeps trying to take me down A lot of folks believe in me, I'ma make them proud This for my friends in the struggle, never made it out I've been living the struggle, God, why's life this way? Most of my friends dead, just stuff I'd like to say But I've been lost, just trying to find some pay Forget my future, I just wanna survive today Lately, I've been starving, every morning barfing or waking up at the hospital from the Narcan I know you, it probably sounds retarded But death gotta be easy, cause life is hard, man I'm sick of the pain So then I put some shit in my vein Homeless on the streets while I sleep in the rain I'd rather be alone than to chill with these lanes And I'm alone, depressed, life's conflicting I need meds but I can't afford prescriptions We got habits so my wife even tricking This for those struggling in a fight with addiction Lately, life been getting crazy wild Addiction keeps trying to take me down A lot of folks believed in me, I'ma make them proud This for my friends in the struggle, never made it out Lately, life been getting crazy, wow Addiction keeps trying to take me down A lot of folks believed in me, I'ma make them proud This for my friends in the struggle, never made it out I've been so damn stuck, but I can't grow up I've been riding around town in stolen trucks I've been breaking in houses, stealing gold and stuff Just so I could waste the money and overdose on drugs I've been trying to get back hope but I'm piss ass broke And all my friends all jokes Took a shot of love, the devil killed that though My girl died pregnant, man, I'm still half broke The other half, it took years, I built that slow Then my dad passed away, I almost slit my throat Socially awkward with no friends left, yo So if you on rock bottom, I've been that low It sucks when you girl and girl's a bitch ass hoe And all your friends cross the line like tic-tac-toes This for those who about to give up, I went that road Don't let them tell you nothing, you can get back home Lately, life been getting crazy wild Addiction keeps trying to take me down A lot of folks believed in me, I'ma make them proud This for my friends in the struggle, never made it out Lately, life been getting crazy wild Addiction keep trying to take me down A lot of folks believe in me, I'ma make them proud This for my friends in the struggle, never made it out There we go, that was Audio Mage with uh, Fighting Addiction And um, man, it's got... <sighs> He makes a lot of good points in there, man. And uh, he's talking about every song that he does is a, is a part or something that he's lived or done. So what you're hearing is basically his life thrown on canvas onto music. You know, that that's his canvas doing the uh, lyrics. And uh, yeah, we've actually talked with him, Lisa and myself. And uh, we talked about getting his music in the rotation here at the fat cat as well uh you can find his music at soundcloud um he's really making a push he's trying to get on the uh, xxl freshman and uh i wish him the best of luck and hopefully maybe um i told him too i mean because he yeah, we've been busy a lot of people are busy we'll have him live on here you know have him just call in and we'll talk to him for about 10 minutes and uh let him tell a story to the people it's an amazing <laughs> story uh, so what do you think? You like that song? Ladies? I like it. It sounds really good. Um, you got a fan, Jason, texting in. He says that song hits home for him. Absolutely. And, and I know it will. I know that there's a lot of people that will listen to that song and it'll hit home. It'll make sense. Uh, and they've either lived it or they'll say, well, I don't want to live that. You know? So speaking of independent artists, when I got home last week after Little Miss Angelina decided to go over my head and talk to the boss about being on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, Mom, I want to be an independent artist on there. I was like, um, have you wrote a song yet? 
wrote some music for it. Have you practiced it? <laughs> She's like, no, no, I know a lot of songs. Um, you have to write your own song. We can't let you sing somebody else's That's copyright right. laws. But if you are out there listening and you are someone that does write songs, hit Richard, myself up in Messenger, get a hold of us, mm-hmm. and we'll see what we can do to play. But you have to be the author. Yeah, and we'll play anything, man. Country, rock. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're just a DJ and you DJ music, uh, techno. I mean, the only thing I'm getting submitted to me, and I mean, I, I put this out there. I, I mean, I even push it on social media. Uh, if you're an independent artist and you want to get heard, man, holler at us. We'll call well, you maybe up. Maybe this will help. If we don't have an independent artist for me, I'm going to have to sing. Oh, yeah. Trust me, you don't want that. <laughs> and I'm running with you. Till the morning light. I'll be singing at home, just walking around the house, acting <laughs> like I'm professional. My daughter's giving me that, like, what are you doing look <laughs> <laughs> well um yeah i've got a couple other texts in here too man uh deshaun's like yeah dude song's banging um and i got another one and i won't disclose the name because they said that i too <laughs> man we've had a lot of people that have lived that lifestyle and i'm glad to see that you're out of that they said i too had a fight with uh, heroin and i beat it and i can relate to some of the things he's saying, waking up in the hospital, getting sick from the Narcan was his quote. So uh, I'm glad that, that that touches you, man. Let this guy know, and I'll pass it on to Audio Mage too, that he got some shout outs and that people related to it and liked it. And like I said, right now, the only place I know, uh, he's on SoundCloud for sure. He doesn't have a website up yet, I don't believe, but um, I will post some links up on our uh, social media uh, specifically the Facebook, so you can get a uh, get with that on, on the BRS media. That is, uh, you know, we're all housed. Everything that Lisa and I do is housed under BRS media. And man, Lisa, we almost had a special guest tonight for a few minutes. Was going to come on, Uncle Cletus. Let me guess. He ran off with his girlfriend. No, he's in, he's in lockdown. What had happened, man, is uh, he's got a girlfriend over in the Philippines. And he's like a dual resident. He's a resident over there as well. And um, when this all went down, he got locked down over there in the Philippines. So Uncle Cletus, anything I'm doing, he's trying to sneak and send it over to me, man, because they got him on clampdown over there. He was going to try and send us a couple of uh, messages. But he said, just let everybody know that I miss them and I love them. And I'll be back. So we can be looking for some freshness coming from there as well. Uh, Lise, man, give me some story. I know you had another story. Um, I do have another story. It's about Domino's Pizza. Hmm. You like Domino's Pizza? <sighs> Back in the day, I did. I'm not much, you know, I'm trying to do this diet thing now. I'm on that right. thrive, thrive, stay alive, baby. Well, I personally have never liked pizza. Maybe when I was a kid, I can't remember, but I hate pizza as an adult. So, anyway, Russia has a branch of Domino's over there. They decided they were going to run a two month contest uh if you did their contest you win mm-hmm. but all you had to do was get their domino's logo tattooed in a prominent place upload it on hashtag uh, on facebook instagram or whatever russia's facebook is i don't know and then like hashtag it, something like that yeah i wouldn't even gonna try um and then do like hashtag dominance take a picture of it and upload it there and then um, go to any of the Domino locations over there, and they give you a certificate where you get a hundred pizzas yearly for a hundred years. Shut up. And then we're gonna run this contest so for two whole months. If you put this in a prominent location on your body, it has to say Domino's. That means like you can't put it like you know, yeah. Right. So it'd have to be like you'd have to wear shorts and it'd be on like say your calf right. or your forehead or, or your like your or, neck or your hand or. Yeah. Like, you couldn't put it on your butt. And you would get how many pizzas? 100 pizzas every year for every year. 100 years. Okay, so that would feed you. For life. Meals. So you had one third of your meals covered for the, 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 yeah, the rest of your 100 years. So I don't have too many of us living that long ago. Uh, so basically, you have 100 pizzas. So one third of your meals covered for the, I don't know, man. Because I'd get tired of the pizza probably after about the, 87th year? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe after not even the first three months, man. Well, uh, they didn't yeah. think that the contest was going to, like, really take off. They thought, you know, they'd get a couple of fans here and there that would uh-huh. 
literally go get Domino's logo tattooed on him. But just in five days, they had 300 people go get their logo tattooed on them and up and upload it. So they had to, after five days, they had to shut the contest down because now they're going to have to give 300 people a hundred pizzas a year for a hundred years. And they were, they, they were going to go bankrupt doing that. So they had to shut it all down uh, because they post, you know, losses of profit. But So what's the math on that? You said 300 people, right? Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Uh, I wish we had a Siri in here. A Siri. 100 pizzas a year, so that's 3,000 pizzas. <laughs> well, well, that's just ridiculous. That's 30,000 pizzas a year. For all of them, yeah. So that's 30,000 pizzas. Let's just say, I mean, come on. I mean, the average person pays... I know they got the five and the eight. But let's just say 15, uh, 20 bucks for a pizza, right? So 20 bucks times 300,000. That's how much money they could have made if they sold, right? Mm-hmm. So let's see right here. <clears throat> Yeah, six million, right? Six million dollars worth of pizzas a year. And they they still have to give those people the three hundred people. They have to. I mean, they have to go with it. They already had the contest up. Mm. So those three hundred people are literally going to get their pizzas. So that's how much they're losing. But after just after five days, they shut the contest down instead of leaving it running for two months. <laughs> I don't know if I would walk around with a Domino's logo on me. I think yeah. that'd be worse than getting a man's name tattooed on me. I know I wouldn't do it, but that's just me, man. I just, um, I believe that if you're going to have body art on your body, that it needs to have meaning and significance. Um, you know, so whenever I put something on my body, I, I, I contemplate and I think, and I decide it's got to be, it's got to be something that happened during my life. It's got to tell a story. So yeah. And pizza is not a part of my life story. Right. So (laughs) we have somebody chiming in, Christina Ling. Okay. And it's going back to what we were discussing right before that uh, about drug addiction. Mm-hmm. Uh, she says that she used to be really bad about uh, drugs and she was able to get off of them clean. She'd been clean for quite some time. But recently she went to her doctor because she has some health issues and she, her doctor knows about her drug addiction that she's, you know, overcome, but still prescribed her Fennerman. Which, if people don't know what Fennerman is out there, Fennerman is a weight loss pill. I will tell you firsthand, because I've taken it before, if you drug test while taking Fennerman, you will flunk for methamphetamines. So, in my opinion, to me, Fennerman is basically a prescription methamphetamine from your doctor. Wow. That's what it is, in my opinion. I mean, I've never done any type of hard drugs, but I can only assume that what Fennerman does to people is what meth does because it makes you stop that's eating not you lose weight. That's not considered like part of the opioid problem. I guess not. I mean, doctors are still <clears throat> prescribing it right now. Does it get you high? Um, I don't. It doesn't get me high, but I can imagine that for some people, it probably does. Mm-hmm. Um, she didn't know that Fennerman was like that, mm-hmm. and she she had taken it for one week, and said that it was very hard just in that one week when she realized what it was after being told. Uh, by her significant other right it was hard for her just to get off it after one week but she has been able to get off of it and she's she's a lot better she said it makes you a monster superstar alert let me hear it ladies and gentlemen we just got messaged in by big mama hey big mama happy easter my love big mama says what's up everybody i'm listening my phone's not charged very well so hopefully we'll get through the show it sounds great i love the whole thing love big mama she's she's a sweet lady man i love big mama i don't know what i'd do without big mama she's a sweetheart i I need to go by and see her next time i come up in the norman i'm gonna come early i'm gonna see big mama big Big, big mama loves some little lease little lease big mama uncle cletus everybody gets together miss lolly Oh Lord! That's why I was thinking that. Uh, man, if you met Miss Lolly, you go run it. I don't know. You and her get along good. Shoot, <laughs> I could see you and her 
Yeah, all waving her um, head back and forth, gossiping. Oh, I, oh yeah, that'd be. Oh, that, that's me. And that my sister that would make Big Mama's day. The three of y'all got together <laughs> for about two hours. You know that Uncle Lee's gonna be wherever Miss Lolly's at. Drink, sipping on some wine, eating some cheese and crackers. Oh, I can see it right now. Uh, Jason Fouché is chiming in. He says <laughs> okay, he but... used to be addicted to cocaine and Damn. is getting ready to celebrate his three year sobriety. Hey, way to go, brother. Congrats on that. Congrats man, I'm going to tell you right now, look, I am I am a full proponent of second chances, man. I believe everyone deserves a second chance and even a third chance. But if you don't get it after that, man, there's something wrong. Like, if you're blessed with a true second chance at life and you're deep down and you're addicted to something like that, and it doesn't, even, it doesn't have to be drugs. And there's people that are so – they're addicted to sex. They blow every penny they have on – you know, sexual taboos. Stop licking your lips over there, Lisa. I see you over there. <laughs> All right, see, look at that. See, she's one of these people. Uh, you know, that's why we keep it strictly business around here. No, I'm just kidding. But there's all kinds of addictions. I mean, even tobacco and, uh, I mean, sugar and, uh, I mean, there's just, you know, alcohol and it wrecks people. It doesn't just wreck you as a person in your soul, man. It's wrecking your body and, that's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be glad. I, I've always stayed away from the hard stuff, man. Um, and if I ever did go out and party back in the days, man, it was, I was, it was like a recon operation. I was in and out. I might be like, oh, yeah, I tried that. No, thanks. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> thank God, because I got a very addictive uh, nature. But um, it's funny, Big Mama said, uh, yeah, happy Easter. Uh, little Leaks, Big Rich, love you guys. Uh, where is my tuna fish? I bought big, I got big mom. I was at the store. She's like, if you can find any tuna fish, and this is back when you couldn't find any canned stuff on the shelf for a minute, for about five, six days, and not even tuna fish or ramen. Ooh, I'm going to tell this ramen, and then we can tell the ramen story. Uh, -huh. uh so <laughs> that's perfect. Um, so we couldn't find tuna fish anywhere, and I'm in my family dollar, right? And they got tuna fish. And I like it in water, but they had it in vegetable oil or something like that. And nobody likes it in the oil, but I, I even text her. I'm like, oh, they got tuna fish, but it's the one in the oil. She's like, grab it. <laughs> you know, I was like, and I'm like, oh, no, they even got top ramen, but it's only the shrimps. I'm like, I'm grabbing them. <laughs> you know, it's was like, I started getting that. Uh, Would you be in it? Oh, yeah, I got that hoarding Order. bug and family dollar for like <laughs> 10 seconds. And I'm like, stop, wake up, Richard. You're the bread man. Uh, speaking of get a hold store, of yourself, man. Speaking of the dollar store, my brother Greg and his wife Marie went to the dollar store yesterday, mm -hmm. and they said they went to the ghetto dollar store there in Shawnee, but I'm not sure. I'm thinking they went to the one on Independence in Harrison, but <laughs> this guy come out of the store and like he dropped a bunch of stuff. So of course, Mister Shaw, she's big hearted like me. She runs over to try to help him. Hit her. My brother was like, No, 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 no. Because this dude literally just stole all the stuff and it fell out of his coat as he was walking out their store. And she just thinks he's dropping yeah, it. Yeah, she just thought he dropped it and she was going to run over and help him. You know? And my brother was like, no, 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 don't do that. No, no. He, had actually he turns and it. looks at her like Lord of the Rings. Very precious. <laughs> Get back. Right? So talking about stealing and ramen, let me tell you about this story. Hey, Brian, hold on. Brian Schumann just said, sorry, guys, I'm late, but I'm here. Keep it going. Hey, Mr. Schumann. Happy Easter. So there was a trailer, tractor trailer, and it was transporting $98,000 worth of ramen. Mm. That's a lot of damn ramen. That is a lot of ramen. Because um, ramen is cheap. You can get like yeah. five packs for a buck. Right. Um, it was stolen as it was parked at a Chevron gas station in Fayetteville hey, County, man. Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, the incident happened sometime in the middle of the night, according to the report, the victim filed with the local authorities. The victim said that he had permission to pro park his truck on the property owner's uh, property at the gas station. It was 53 foot trailer, he said, mm -hmm. uh, which rests along the Georgia Interstate Highway of 85 North. But when he returned back there, the truck was gone. <laughs> mm -hmm, go figure. <laughs> uh, he discovered uh, it was all the noodles and everything was gone. I would think that if they took the truck, they're not going to empty all the noodles out, but I don't know. That's what it said in the report. Um, for the purpose of quint, uh, telling you like exactly how many noodles was in there, $98,000, like I said, mm -hmm. 
um, if you, on average, if you break it down, a package of noodles by itself is usually about 29 cents. Mm -hmm. So 98,000, 29 cents, it averages out to 300,000 packages of ramen. That's a lot of damn ramen. I don't know anybody would want that unless it was maybe like some of that escaped from prison Man, or been in prison I, a long time. I, I should do a podcast called Making Ramen the Shizzle. All right. I know because it really, dude, I'll, I'm, I'll cook ramen and make it taste so dang good, like miso or whatever. And I can, like, I will tear it up. People are like, man, you're making this taste like a fine dining pizza. So, man, I could live the rest of my life, man, if I had, you know, 300,000 packs. Right. I had somebody ask me just the other day if I eat ramen. I was like, eh, not very often because, like, I'm not a ramen mm -hmm. person. And they were like, why? And I was like, it's just, don't taste that great. And they said, mm -hmm. you need to find you a prison friend. Because, you know, <laughs> but in prison, but it's turned their life around because they'll show you some shit. That's what they told me. I was oh, like, they, they, I you can. <laughs> hey, look, I, man. Ramen's not only a soup, too. Man, you can eat that stuff dry like it is and pretend like it's like little crunchies. I've seen people do that when you I was You crunch in it up in the bag. Like we, yeah, we would have it in our backpack. Crunch it up in the bag, right? And you pour the seasoning. Not all of it, because that seasoning's, yeah, it's meant to be diluted. Yeah, so you would probably have so much MSG in your body, you would explode. <laughs> like your eyeballs would be sticking out. And go, oh, are you okay, little Timmy? Uh, something is wrong with your eyes. I no, just, just snorted. It explode like the fart package yeah. did this morning. Hummery. Horrible. Oh, Lord. That was a scary story. But yeah, I love ramen. I ain't going to lie. I just, why would, why would somebody want 300,000 packages of ramen? They're probably going to make some money somewhere. Because you know what? Ramen now, I've been watching all these uh, do-it-yourself shows, too with ramen they're like fixing their sink with ramen they're fixing chip tiles with ramen um that doesn't sound like something i want to eat i know it's scary it makes tiles. you think what the <laughs> hell's a ramen not only can you eat it not only can you make it a soup but you can fix your sink your toilet your tub i'm telling you i don't know ramen could be the next multi uh you know multitask tool for food kind of like bread was because when we ran out of toilet paper people went to bread yeah it's soft it's cushiony i'm not your wife in my ass with a piece of bread <laughs> i'm just saying i'm saying that right now mm, good lord um what oh man time is man rolling tonight uh let's go ahead and get that uh beef you know, where's it. the beef tonight? You guys ready for where's the beef? Where's the beef's going to be fun tonight? I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, I like it. So, you know, with that said, uh, let's hit it. Well, if I can find it, sorry, guys. Big Rich, you hey. have one job. Where's the beef bourguignon? Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Beef stroganoff. Where's the beef? Hackers. Sizzling beef. So Spicy braised beef. Barbecued hey, beef ribs. Up. Beef wellington. Let's get it. Pepper beef. Beef Hey, where's the beef? Do you see where I'm going with this? I don't sleep on no beef. We ain't sleeping no beef. You know I'm on top of everything, nigga. Lurk. I come on your street. Oh, sorry. Beef more. Sorry. That I'm hitting like the same button over and over my finger over here. I'm just stuck on the thing. I just keep, where's the beef? Where's the beef? Sorry, guys. So your, your finger is kind of doing like the foot tap to yeah. the music. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> where's the beef tonight? Man, you know what? There's always beef, but they call it more of a rivalry when you involve sports. Well, tonight kind of involves food, eating, and sports, I guess, because there was a beef, man, and people really didn't know it. Joey Chestnut, who you know is the world's, uh, he, he meets, eats the most hot dogs year in and year out, but he's been beat a few times by Kobayashi. Uh, and it's been a rivalry they've had. And there's been another lady that's won as well. Uh, I think her name was like the widow or something, the dog widow or whatever. I forget. But anyways, uh, this beef had me laughing, man. I was reading an article the other day, and I don't know where this came up. But um, Joey Chestnut takes this serious, man. Like, more, he said, dude, I am the McGuire to his Sosa. You know, that's how serious he takes it. I'm the Muhammad Ali to his Joe Frazier. 
Okay, Joey Chestnut. Those are some big quotes, man. Uh, but however, their beef is a little different because, you know, it's not like they get up in their face. We're talking about guys that eat hot dogs, you know. Um, but Joey has been coming out on any show that will let him speak or any interview, and he's sitting here calling Kobayashi a liar, a cheat, a sissy, and that he will take every advantage he can to get the win at any eating competition, especially the 4th of July hot dog eating contest. Okay. Now, judging by Kobayashi's arrest last year at the hot dog eating competition, after storming off the stage following Chestnut's victory, I'd say, uh, yeah, um, they, they're not too fond of each other. And um, when Kobayashi was asked, he basically has no comment. Um, you know, you can say whatever you want, but this is true American rivalry. Uh. Hot dog eating boys. So that's our beef of the week, man. Uh, these two guys don't like each other. And this 4th of July, which is coming up, maybe we'll get to see them again going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, see who can get the most hot dogs in their mouth at once and in their belly. At one point, man, I remember I was watching the replay on ESPN. That dude, Joey Chestnut, man, looked like he had 20 hot dogs in his mouth at once. I was like, how the, is he doing this? Oh, man. I get, But they train. I guess they have some kind of muscle that some people are missing down in their stomach that allows them to expand it and have more room. I'm glad I don't have that muscle. Yeah, me too. Because I mean, I wonder what, I mean, doing this your whole life, it's got to do harm. Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, so that was our beef of the week. And ironically, it was uh, hot dogs, which usually only have the crap portions of beef in them. Uh -huh. So, uh, do you have another story? Because I got a two more I want to tell tonight before we get going. Oh, you can tell one yours. I got okay. one. I got another one I want to tell there. <laughs> well, remember, guys, I told you earlier in the intro that tonight we're talking a little bit about the Guinness Book of World Records. Well, we thought we were. Um, Roberto Esquivel from Mexico uh, had posted a video of himself measuring his Johnson. That's right, and it went viral. Uh, he claimed to have the biggest uh -uh in the world coming in at a <laughs> humongous 18.9 inches. Okay. So uh, he was hoping to get recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, as allegedly, they said that his wee-wee was so big that he had to keep the almost arm-length Johnson in constant wraps just to make it like stand up, I guess. And if he tried to go somewhere, they said he literally had to pin it to the inside of his leg and then kind of curl it around his ankle. Um. Dude must have been a midget too, I guess. But anyways, uh, it turns out, <laughs> unsurprisingly, that uh, Roberto was just telling tall tales. And that he was Sounds busted like he was for using long some, tails. yeah, long tails. <laughs> right. uh, that it was a fake prosthetic in the video. And it turns out, dudes, uh, uh, barely breaking the three-inch barrier. Huh. What's that song? I don't want, I, I, I don't want a short uh, man. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Roberto Esquivel from Mexico, <laughs> you lying piece of. Uh, he even had them coming out to measure that thing. I was gonna say something, but. No, I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> it probably should be. I want to show you a picture that a, a guest has sent in, and you tell me what the first impression you get, Big Rich, when you see this. Uh, so mix a lot. <laughs> the baby's got back. If you hold it upside down. I'm trying to hold it upside down. Oh, oh good me. Lord, stop it. <laughs> We're going to keep that one uh, off the air. PG yeah. Folks, uh, we do get a little uh, rated R, PG-13, but we're not going rated X. <laughs> uh, so let me tell you about this story. His name is Alberto Lopez. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and he uh, went in and filled out a job application at the local police department in Cottonwood. Uh, He's trying to get a job to be a police officer, basically. Cottonwood where? Come on now. Oh, I don't know. It didn't say. Oh. Um, California, I believe. Okay, Cottonwood, California. Or not California, but uh, 
Arizona, sorry. Arizona, okay. Anyways, um, he goes in there, he does this interview with the police department, you know, and uh, they have to do the background check, you know, like they do with everybody. And so they do a background check on this guy, and he comes back to his warrant for his arrest. <laughs> yeah. Um, in 2016, he robbed the Bank of America branch where he was employed at, and roughly over for $5,000. And then he took off and moved two hours away to Phoenix. Uh, the police department looked for him the whole time and they didn't find him. Yeah. And then he comes in and puts a job application in with the exact same police department that's looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> so when they do the background check, they yeah. find it, find out that he has this warrant and they call him in making it sound like, you know, he was going to get the job and they come on down and they had it all planned out. He was arrested. <laughs> Freeze. Uh, the police did say to tell, you know, in their interview, they want everybody to know that he's officially out of the running for the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. What was he thinking? He's like, hey, Felix, man, I got that job, bro. I'm going to be a cop, dude. Could you imagine what we're going to do? <laughs> you know, um, that big first 5000 that wasn't nothing, bro. I, I mean, I heard some stupid stuff before, but that one kind of. Caught me a little off guard there. Horrible. Look, I know that I also teased this, and I had to get this one in because um, we are right pushing over that hour, which I don't mind. I said we could stay here until uh, we got these stories out and uh, until we felt good. But this one this comes from a lady named Amanda Teague, okay? Amanda is 45 years old, and she married someone that was 255 years older than her. Yeah. She married the ghost of Jack Teague, a pirate who allegedly had sailed the seven seas in the early 1700s. Okay. Ironically, Miss Teague works as a Captain Jack Sparrow impersonator in Ireland. Hmm? And I kind of brought that up tonight, too, with the Ireland thing. And I, it caught my eye, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But the pair first met, if you could call it a meeting, in 2015, when Teague was laying in her bed at her home in, uh, I think, I hope I'm saying this right, Drogheda, Ireland? Or Drogheda, Ireland? I don't know how they pronounce their Gs. She, <clears throat> she said she felt a ghostly presence in her room and continued to do so almost nightly for six months. After these six months, feeling the ghost presence, Teague said she developed feelings and fell in love with the ghost. So much so that he proposed and she accepted and they got married. <laughs> And this is in Ireland. Now, while I, why I bring this up is, speaking of Ireland, uh, Vanessa Hogel and Gwen Clapper. Gwen Clapper's uh, interview is about to go up. You saw that uh, I was showing you some finished pieces that I was doing on that one as well uh, today. Um, but their docuseries, their mini docuseries, they're doing Hidden Gems, which you can find on their YouTube channel now as well, uh, under um, Perfect Trust productions i believe and part three of that documentary has is now up for you to view and it's really good because they give that no nonsense that uh hollywood has peeled off of this thing that you know it's just two ordinary psychic mediums with doing their thing and um kudos to both of them for doing it they're independent women and they're trying to uh uh, pay forward uh, on their own, and I give them kudos. So uh, if you get a chance, guys, check that out. Perfect Trust Productions on YouTube, and you can probably find them on Facebook and everywhere else. But I just thought it was ironic when I saw that, that it had to do with ghosts, a woman marrying a ghost. Yeah. They're psychic when, medians, and they're doing their thing in Ireland. When, I, when you first were telling me a little bit of that story before the show, it made me think of your YouTube uh show you have up also where the lady oh the fan her story? husband yeah having a sexual relationship with a ghost yeah a succubus yeah it was wild that man that thing has gotten like close to 700 hits if you guys haven't checked that out go watch it it's yeah i narrate super crazy we, you know and that's another thing too fans if you go to the brs media uh fan page on facebook or the big rich show or the big rich little lisa it's all connected there um and you've got a story the deals in the paranormal, whether it be alien, uh, UFOs, Sasquatch, it could be anything you want. 
tell us your story and then we'll we'll take it and re-narrate it and put it up on our YouTube and give you full credit for it. Uh, we, that's called our fan story of the week. And um, we just don't get enough of them to have it be a weekly thing. But every time I get a few, I'll go through and I, I'll, I'll put music or sound effects to it and I'll read it. And um, I ask, hey, I'm going to make a few changes here just for the way that it's going to read when I'm telling it. And I let them know. And if they approve, fine. And then uh, we throw it up on you, uh, YouTube and Instagram. And uh, people love that, man. There's a, I know we got a lot of good response on that. Yeah. yeah. And Brian Schumann actually came on uh, and told his story, his fan story one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian's been around for a minute. So I'm glad he's listening tonight, too. Um, with that said, Lise, man, I'm out of stories tonight. Yeah, I ain't got much more to talk about either. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed tonight, and I hope you all have had a great Easter. Uh, I'm hoping that the weather will be nice to me on the way home. <laughs> uh, I hope so. What's weird, man, is how are we – it's supposed to snow tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, come on, folks. We're uh, mid-April. How's it snowing? Come on. Oklahoma's bipolar. No, this is more than just Oklahoma. <laughs> we live in Oklahoma. It doesn't just go. I mean, we're talking about 70, 80 degree <laughs> degrees change in weather from morning to afternoon. And that is just ridiculous. And it it has to be more than just, oh, this is just Oklahoma for you. Because I know what, oh, this is just Oklahoma's about. And I know what something just ain't right here almost like the jet stream or the clouds or like they're wanting to keep it cold cloudy moist for some reason and i'm not going to say it i want to (laughs) say i think it was tuesday monday or tuesday it was 103 degrees in shawnee yeah that's crazy and now we're gonna snow tomorrow yeah i told you it's wild i was like one day i was in shorts and a t-shirt and i was sweating and me and chuck were like man it is miserably warm today then the next day, I'm like, dude, it is 20 degrees with the wind chill. Literally, and I was in shorts because I thought it was going to be another nice day. Charlie comes out of the house. He's got on a winter jacket, jeans. I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I thought it was going to warm up as the day goes on. It only got colder. So we have a fan uh, from Cali. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Chelsea. And she says, I love your show. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Chelsea. I appreciate that. Um, we try. We want to have fun. We want to keep making it better for everybody. And um, like I said, if if fans, if you guys, your family, if you have ideas or things you want to hear or see, whether it be on this show or it's on the YouTube channel, let us know. I mean, we're, we're wide open. We'll do anything. We got Uncle Cletus, too. He's coming back. And, uh, you know, Lisa's going to be starting to do a few documentaries here and there. And um, we're looking to add uh, a BRS Media Europe. And uh, that's going to be headed by Wayne Hudgens uh, that we did the JFK with. And um, we got big things coming up, guys, man. This is only, I mean, we're just getting this uh, freight train rolling. And uh, it's you that are here in the beginning that keep us motivated. And you're the ones that are here from the get-go. And we need your energies to keep feeding our energies because Neither one of us do this full time. This is a side thing that we do. But every free moment, I promise you, I'm in here trying to give you something good or trying to come up with something to uh, appease the fans. And, uh, you know, we ask for nothing in return except that you subscribe, follow, like, and share anything that we put out to help get the word spread. And, you know, with that said, Lisa, uh, I had a fun time with you. And I'm sorry to drag you out from Easter. Oh, no. But I, I think we gave coming. everybody a fun Easter evening. And uh, you know how I do it. God I bless. Stay, stay safe, safe. And have and a wonderful night. Day.
I'm just getting stoned Like they think I'm witch Fuck quarantine I'm way too sick I've been holding it down in these streets like an anchor bitch I got crazy chicks making licks, slinging bricks, major risks. XXL freshman, I'm trying to make the list. What up? Towards our bus kid, I'm never growing up. Uh uh. Rep low life, yeah. All I know is drugs. They be like, damn, that emo kid got dope as fuck. Fuck blowing up, yo, I wanna blow shit up. Huh? What'd you say, dude? I didn't pay attention, I paid due. I evicted my mind, I had to make moves I've been trapped in the underground, time to break loose I said, huh? What you say, dude? I didn't pay attention, I paid dues I evicted my mind, I had to make moves I've been trapped in the underground, time to break loose It's been a long fucked up road, like, oh man The only one who helped me was Rob the Dope Man Take a second, let it soak in Call me Young Curfew, yeah, cause I go in I am real trouble, I'm that guy from Hell's Double I'm trying to blow up on Pornhub and fuck some male couples I've been bucking so many punches, got red knuckles Time to break loose like a fat bitch's bell buckle Get it poppin' hot shot, I get to drop it Shut up one of legends talking, they don't make legends often I've been out here going crazy hair like Dennis Robin Yo, I'm, I'm sicker than the flu, you could get the coffin Yeah, coming up fast, Devin has to run it back The only thing I learned in life is nothing lasts Man, it sucks, people suck, just a bunch of swags If I see the stage on me, then I cut the grass Huh? What you say, dude? I didn't pay attention, I paid dues I evicted my mind, I had to make moves I've been trapped in the underground, time to break loose I said, huh? What you say, dude? I didn't pay attention, I paid dues I evicted my mind, I had to make moves I've been trapped in the underground, time to break loose Peace. Peace.